Well, writer and lawyer Alan Dale became a bit of an expert on Ukraine when researching her debut novel, The Hand That Signed the Paper, 30 years ago. And she joins me now. Helen, I know you've been looking into this whole issue of distrust in the media and how the COVID coverage is related to how people feel about the way the mainstream media is covering the war. Uh, but let me just start by posing this question to you. Why on earth should we trust a word that the BBC News, ITV News or Sky News tell us after the way they've reported COVID over the past two years? I perhaps should provide a little bit of context here. I wrote this book, The Hand That Signed the Paper. It's about Ukraine. It's set in Ukraine. And I perceive for some reason for, for stuff in this book to be perceptive on this crisis. I, I, for example, I foresaw the invasion, Putin's invasion. So that's the background to this. And quite a lot of my commentary initially was just Ukrainian history, a bit about the culture, a bit about the Second World War, a bit about the Holodomor, the Ukrainian famine, and uh, why, and why, for example, Vladimir Putin was constantly referring to Ukrainian Nazis, and that has actually happened again today in another um, uh, publication from his Vestia in, in Russia. And then it became very clear to me, particularly on the Nazis point, I spent a lot of time having to point out that whilst there used to be Nazis in Ukraine, there aren't now. And I, I, my commentary and my coverage began to change from fairly straight historical information based on the hand that signed the paper to having to rebut various claims that people were making about the war in Ukraine from the quite outlandish. I had people suggesting that there was no war in Ukraine, uh, that all the people, pictures you were seeing of injured people, both Russians and Ukrainians, by the way, in this case, were all crisis actors. They weren't real. They were just acting. So that was one e extreme. And then you got other things. You got various other people repeating pro-Putin propaganda. And it was quite extraordinary to me because these were people who, some, some of whom I am aware of on social media and have been for some years, um, were supporting the Canadian truckers in Ottawa on a civil liberties basis, which I was as well, and were now had suddenly decided that everything that proceeded from the mouth of a dictator and a dictatorship was proceeding as if from the mouth of God. And I sat down and I wrote a few pieces about this. I, I wrote a um, big piece for Law and Liberty, uh, which is where I'm senior writer in the United States, wrote some pieces for CapEx. Um, I've been on uh, media outlets across the spectrum, not just GB News, trying to e explain what I thought was going on. And my initial thought was what you described at the beginning, that the press disgraced itself with COVID, particularly the, the fact checkers who just produced, they were supposed to be checking facts and they produced nonsense, often enumerate nonsense. It, the press was badly exposed for enumeracy. You also had the problem of your know, lockdowns were bad and then they were good and then they were bad, you know, and then coronavirus came from a bat in a wet market in Wuhan and then it didn't. Then it came from, from a lab and then maybe it didn't again and now maybe it did. Look, all of this constant wrenching about of the public in the name of the science when the scientists themselves mm. hadn't worked it out. So at first in my big piece for Law and Liberty I wrote on the, on the Ukraine war and this phenomenon, I blamed mainly the COVID co coverage. But in the most recent piece I wrote for CapEx, which I, is called The Fog of News, which you've kindly retweeted uh, of mine, is, I, I think it goes good. back. It goes back before COVID, and um, it goes back to some of the coverage of Brexit in this country, which was very irresponsible. And a lot of the the pollsters need a whack for that. Not all of them. I mean, the old wait right. for Servation joke is a legitimate one. Servation were yeah. very good, and as a general rule, YouGov seem to be. But they both have fallen off the perch at various times. So bad, bad, and dishonest polling. Um bad and dishonest coverage of the debates in the um, in 2019. Like the way, for example, unless you were a Westminster insider, I was covering Brexit for The Australian, which is the main national daily in Australia. People just outside of the bubble did not realise the extent to which John Burko was loathed and hated by all sides of the house and was an appalling bully, this kind of thing. And then all of the, and then in the United States, they had their own parallel universe with Donald Trump which bled a little bit over here, but mm. not that much. 
And so all of this just created a perfect storm that ran into the, the abysmal COVID coverage. Got it. And now we've got a situation where people are being sceptical of aspects of the war in Ukraine, which they shouldn't be sceptical of. And yet you've got people not seeming to understand that there is a war on. You do have the fog of news. You need to take both sides' propaganda um, with a pinch of salt. I mean, obviously, the Russians are telling more lies. Uh, they have more to hide. They are the dictatorship, the lies that they have told, for example, about the atrocities in Bucha, north of, north of Kiev, are a good example of that. But by the same token, you may recall early in the war, there were all this footage of the ghost of Kiev, apparently a Ukrainian air ace who had 10 kills, and uh, it was footage from a video game. So everybody has to keep their wits about them. And I say that as someone who strongly su supports Ukrainian self-determination against this invasion, that we've now created a rod for our own back and with dishonest coverage of a number of things. And I, in my piece mm. for CapEx, I talk about the trans issue uh, where Leah Thomas, the face, was photoshopped to make it yes. look more feminine and the chin exactly. was narrowed and the Adam's so apple So the media was, was... continue even today, Helen, not to do themselves any favours. But it's They're a fascinating They're not doing any favours, no. And, and, of course, you can read that piece by coming to one of our Twitter pages, Helen Dale. Thank you so much.